Hi, I'm Ryan Samansky, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we think about uh, the battleship as a thing of the past. But in 1991, when she was decommissioned, the ship had been reactivated about once a decade throughout her career. And her crew sincerely believed that it would happen again. New Jersey was consistently put away in the best condition, uh, and they believed that if any battleship was brought back, it would be theirs. We know that the Navy did periodic inspections of these ships and got cost estimates for reactivating them. Uh, I've got one from uh, roughly 1997, so about five, six years after the last Iowa-class battleship had be been decommissioned, where they're going through and looking at uh, what it would take cost-wise and equipment-wise to bring her back up to modern standards. We know that many of the inventory of spare parts built up again in the 80s and 90s was kept in the national inventory into the 20-teens. Uh, we have uh, commanding officers when the ship is decommissioned, like Captain Penniston, uh, often going to the phrase or a similar phrase of rest well yet sleep lightly and answer the call, if again heard, uh, to provide the firepower for freedom. A couple of the captains use that uh, phrase, always thinking that when they put the ship to bed, even in the 90s when she's 50 years old, that she will be brought back again. Because the Navy never built a replacement for this ship. Uh, sure, there are other ships that do surface warfare, but in a uh, large gun shore bombardment role, th there is no replacement to this day. Uh, a number of types of ships have been proposed. We'll build arsenal ships, we'll build new cruisers, we'll build the uh, uh, Zumwalt class destroyers and they'll have a rail gun on them or some sort of special extended range conventional munition. And it's just never materialized. Uh, so. At the end of the day, the cheapest way to get naval gunnery support is to bring back an Iowa-class battleship. And this ship's crew believe that was the case. We are standing at uh, one of the old five-inch magazines. And uh, you can see that the crew locked it up when they left. We're going to go in there in a minute. But first, here's a word from our sponsors. Come on in. Notice we keep one of the dogs down so that the door can't shut all the way so that there's still some ventilation going in here. This is the only way in and out of this space. And so if we sealed it up, it would be unventilated. This is one of my absolute favorite uh, magazines because it once served the two aftermost five inch guns here on the starboard side. But when one of those was removed in place of missiles, they got rid of the hoists for them, which would have sat right here. What did they replace that hoist with? Um, they did not remove the armored uh, section around the dredger hoist. This particular one has chilled water going into it. Notice it's an insulated line, which is taking uh, some of the cooling water up to those new missiles they installed. Rather than having to run new armored uh, trunks for that, they just put it into the old dredger hoist. Come over to this side. Here's where the other hoist was for that five inch gun that was removed. And on this one, they put in all of the electrical cabling and just ran it up there instead of removing those trunks or putting in a new one. And then finally, on this corner, you can see what the hoists originally looked like. So it would have been a pair of these in those positions. This part obviously removed, but the Armored trunks over there, like I said, were retained. This room is where the shells would be stacked up. So you can see uh, the shelving here that would have had them. Uh, and you can also see that there's a lot of stuff stowed in here that isn't necessarily magazine related. And it's even more so the case in the associated powder magazine. Look at all this. This is all deck division stuff. Um, this huge block and tackle here 
was for the boat boom on the after port side of the superstructure. Look at the size of this nut and bolt. It's like a 20 pound dumbbell. Um, some of these boxes we've never been in. Uh, for example, I can stand on here and look inside this box, but we, we've never gone into this one. Um, we've got J. Davids over here that are for the SeaWiz magazines for reloading them. You can see one's uh, stenciled with SeaWiz. We've got the hard hats here that the deck division would use during unwrap. There's the female ends of the refueling probes that were removed and put down here. At great difficulty, the crew moves all of this stuff down here and then locks the door before they decommission the ship and put her into mothballs. Why was that? We had initially assumed that uh, maybe this was supposed to go somewhere else off the ship and the crew had maybe been too lazy to do that, so they just hid it down below and locked the door behind them. But with all of the new information we've gathered, that the crew fully expected the ship to be recalled to active duty, uh, we now realize that they were saving as much of the important stuff as possible. When these ships go into mothballs, they are stripped by active ships for usable parts to keep the regular fleet going. Uh, and so some of those important things that the crew was worried would walk were secured in spaces like this one and others. Also, it's the Battleship New Jersey, the most decorated battleship in American history. People took souvenirs, even the shipyard workers who were assigned to maintain the vessel in mothballs. So again, this important stuff is stowed away. Now, it's worth pointing out that uh, historically significant things from the ship are recovered by Naval History and Heritage Command and added to uh, the Navy Curator's Office's collection for use at the Navy's various museums around the country. Uh, so, for example, all of the battleship steering wheels, uh, all of the things from the chapel, like the tabernacle, the, the large crucifix, and the organ were removed in the session by Naval History and Heritage Command. Uh, other random things. And then we were very fortunate in that when the ship was turned back into a museum, they returned that to us. Likewise, whenever the ship was recalled to active duty, those things would be returned to the ship as well. The best evidence that I have yet found, some of our volunteers in the uh, ship's radio club were down in CIC, and they were going through some of the manuals on a shelf looking for a wiring diagram of uh, the Mark 8 computer or something like that. And they pulled out this folder, uh, and it's all original documents um, that were left there intentionally by the ship's engineering department in, in uh, 1991. Why was this in CIC? It's not an engineering department space. Because they wanted it to be found. Uh, this document is labeled 7 February 1991. So right when the ship is being decommissioned. From engineering officer to prospective engineering officer. Subject, reactivation interest areas. Welcome to the battleship, and congratulations on reactivating New Jersey. This tour will be the most fun you will ever have as an engineer. The ship is awesome. That one's underlined an exclamation mark. Nothing compares to her anywhere else in the world. And like we said earlier in the video, that remains true. There is nothing else in the world that can do what this ship can do. We've prepared some notes in order to pass on information that you would normally receive during the relieving process. Hope you find it useful. Have a great tour. And then it goes through about uh, six or eight pages of uh, basically problems that the engineering department was dealing with at the end of the ship's career that um, because she was deactivated, they never got around to fixing. So like, hey, when you're in the yard reactivating the ship, check these out. We'll uh, go through this document in more detail in a future video, but... Uh, I just thought this was the coolest thing we've ever found on the ship. And honestly, um, I don't get to do much curating as curator of the battleship. I don't get to handle many uh, artifacts like this. I, I do a lot more archaeology, going around the ship and finding spaces like this one and trying to figure out well, what the heck is this and why was it left here? Uh, so 
actually being able to go through an original document like this and answer one of these questions I've had for the five years I've been uh, curator of this ship uh, is really interesting for me, and I hope you guys find it interesting too. If you want to see this in a future video, um, let us know in the comment section down below. There's even a section in this document that specifically mentions this space. Uh, all administrative materials are in pilferable storage in Magazine 56, the magazine that feeds Mount 56. Um, port side one, yeah. Uh, so that's the port side aft magazine, the one that this one is feeding, uh, pilferable storage. So it's all locked up in here so people can't take it. Not that anybody's going to carry this... Uh, block and tackle out of here. The FZ con box keys, maintenance log, and technical manuals are there also. The FZ system is decertified and remains intact. FZ blueprints and lead seal dies were destroyed. Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so this document is specifically telling us that this was pilferable storage and they put everything critical to the ship, that they didn't want some yard bird or, or souvenir hunter or uh, ship's crew member with the souvenir. Uh, they didn't want them walking with it. And it's worth pointing out that this is just one of many similar locations where um, equipment like this was stowed at the end of the ship's career. It seems like the different divisions had different places for it. The longest period of time an Iowa-class battleship was ever deactivated was USS Missouri from 1955 until 1986, 31 years. New Jersey has currently been deactivated for 31 years from 1991 until this video is shot in 2022. Do you think the Navy will ever bring back the Iowa-class battleships? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. Thanks for watching.